Hey, welcome into the live stream today. We're going to be jumping into Gala Games, but in a different perspective. We're actually going to get this perspective of one of the lead executives over there at Gala Games, and that, of course, is John Oswald. So it's going to be fun. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. As you guys know, we cover a lot on Gala The Topic. They're one of our studio partners, but we also dive into blockchain gaming as a whole. Where is the industry going? How are companies navigating these waters right now? And as we see blockchain really start to shift the gaming market, music, entertainment, Gala has been pretty much on the forefront of all of that good stuff. So we thought, hey, let's get somebody in that really understands the roadmap and understand where all of this is going. And that's Mr. John Oswald, president of Gala Games. Great to have you on the show. Hey, Paul, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. So John, let's learn a little bit about uh, you because obviously we've never had you on our show before. So thank you for doing this. Let's get into a little bit about what's your day to day like there at Gala? Because I can imagine having so much fun around all these things. We've got a chance to talk to Sarah and Jason and you know, really understand kind of the evolution of what you guys are doing across the gambit. What's your most favorite thing for the day when you get to work at Gala? Oh man, it, it, it's hard to pick. I, I think uh, working on tokenomics strategy uh, and NFT strategy for the games is probably my, my favorite. Uh, it, it's a lot of, uh, it's kind of that first principle kind of work. We're, we're trying to create things that, that haven't been created before. So when we get into that and, and it's all, you know, I, I, I love games. I'm in, I'm in the industry because uh, I've always loved games and particularly video games. So um, uh, wrapping strategies around all the different genres that, that we're going after, all genres that, that I love, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's difficult, but, but really uh, energizing work to, to, to do. Yeah. I, I really enjoy that part of it. I'm glad you said that because this is something that um, I often, when I talk to game developers, uh, executives, leading companies, even when we look at you know the traditional AAA studios that we talk with here on this show, we get a chance to kind of dive into the mentality behind the executives that build these projects. One of the things that I'm always curious about is I don't hear enough people say they're really working on tokenomics, economies, really the scalability of how these games can work within the blockchain. So it's nice to know that you are into that. When you look at that from a strategic standpoint, because I think a lot of people know Gala for its entertainment forte, obviously within gaming itself, music and film. We just launched uh, here on our show just a few weeks ago. With that being the case, do you see the idea of tokenomics and the economies uh, in blockchain gaming getting even more complex in the future? Or do you think we'll start to see these get easier for gamers and others to really understand? Um, I think that, that they can both, they'll, they'll probably get more complex because we're, we're, uh, um, we're creating new, new rules here for, for how these yeah. work. So no, nobody's actually created uh, a sustainable uh, play to earn economy. So we're, we're utilizing a lot of tools uh, um, to to uh, put one in, in, in place, right? Um, yeah. So uh, among that, I can't say that it's not not complex on the back end when you you look at the spreadsheets for it. At the same time, um, we're trying we're we're game makers, you know, and I, and I I'm a uh, I've been in free to play for a long time, and free to play is all about uh, user experience and easy onboarding. So um, as much as they might be complex to make them work and work long into the future. We, we work hard to make that easy for for players to understand for node owners to understand that you know what how they um how to, how to play the game how, how to earn how to progress in the game all those things yeah. have to be easy easy to get into so you understand exactly what's happening even if there there's complexity underneath yeah for sure okay so 27 games in the lineup for gala uh 27 projects how do you guys keep track of that? Because that sets a lot of developers, <laughs> a lot of creativity. And then you've got music and film kind of, because I think a lot of people ask that question, how does Gala do it? How are they able to keep track of all this great innovation? Well, one, one, one thing is on, on the game development side, we put a lot of work into sourcing the best developers who have great game making experience, uh, you know, tremendous track records for bringing hit games to market. 
So largely, we're, we're depending on those developers to, to build right. great games. And, and that's how most of our relationships uh, um, work. Um, what we really focus on and they're, they're looking for, and it's, it's very different in, in the market too for any developer that's looking for a partner. Um, we, we really, we get married with, the, with, these, with, with our developer partners. Um, and we kind of say up front that what we're looking for is for, for um, uh, folks to look for us to lead on NFT strategy and tokenomics. Um, in, the, in the best case, that becomes a back and forth where we're both innovating because they know their, their game um, better than any, anyone uh, will. Uh, but um, among you know, my interaction and the team's inter interaction, uh, that, that piece of it where we, we love the game, we have some idea of how we're going to structure an NFT strategy around it, um, we, we sign the deal. That, that part where we're actually coming up with how it's really going to work, what exactly are, how do NFTs fit into this game and make the game better? How does the, any great, an economy in the game should improve the gameplay? How do we fit that together? That's the, that's the most intense period of work. So it actually happens uh, fairly early on uh, um, uh, um, there. And then the other focus is, um, once we're actually ready to go to market with the game. So we'll bring, yeah. we'll be bringing um, spider tanks to market next quarter. So there, there's a lot of focus on that game. Superior is another one that we're bringing to market. Um, those two pieces kind of bookend um, the most uh, attention our team uh, team gives. We have a um, tremendous team of uh, game product managers here that, that all have this skill set so we kind of divide and conquer with, with leads across all of those all of those projects 27 always sounds like i'm forgetting something when, when i hear that yeah. number uh it, it is it is a lot to keep track of but uh we got a lot of great people well i think that's the key is when you have um you know good teams that really can especially if they understand the gaming sector and then you layer in the aspect of strategy business development that's another place I think uh, Gala is leading the forefront, at least in blockchain gaming, is that your just your biz dev partnerships along with film and music have been so striking. I think a lot of people are trying to figure out how to keep up with that. Going on to scenarios of engagement, and this talks about players. If you look at across the overall Gala ecosystem, what is a Gala uh, gamer player ecosystem look like today? How large is it? Um, so right now, our only live game is is Townstar. Um, so the 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 base for that game it, it's it's relatively small. Uh, it, it's 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 smaller than, than you would you would expect for for uh, um, mainstream free to play right now. Uh, but it's uh, it's a very um, very involved uh, um, and, and um, rabid fan base we have that are that are bought into the, this mission, which is um, essentially you know saying free to play is, is broken because you 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 spend money on uh, right. digital assets that don't end up being yours uh so so while it's it, it's smaller man if uh if if you haven't um been in our discord and seen the level of interaction uh we have with, with our with our with our with our community um it's it's pretty incredible yeah, I think the key, that's the one thing is the stickiness on uh, games when they launch. It usually uh, translates to other projects within the ecosystem. So uh, I think for you guys as benefit, it's definitely a, a great opportunity to grow because you graduate people into other, you know, we see this all the time with, you know, AAA studios that already have done the same thing, title after title after title. They just create that ongoing growth of audience and gamers that start to attach to that studio and all their content. When you look at mobile gaming, because uh, this is one of the factors I think is going to be the birth of where blockchain will go, even though I do see console and PC gaming still being a big leadership role, at least in you know the Western countries, but in these emerging countries where we could see blockchain gaming really accelerate, you guys are doing a external uh, eternal paradox as the mobile game. Is there some plans to really start to ramp up mobile uh, for the future of Gala? So my mid mid to long term on mobile is it's going to be critically important to, to, to blockchain gaming because it's critically important to, to the gaming industry. I've spent a lot of time in, in free to play and, and in mobile. 
It's by far the, the largest user base. It's by far the biggest revenue driver. Um, and frankly, it's, it's the, types of, the type of game models there are really mostly, most well suited to the, the blockchain proposition. Yeah. Um, so I, I've spent a lot of time in, in free to play. I was at, at, at Zynga uh, in, in, the, um, in, the, in the early days. Uh, been in a number number of uh, uh, startups and the EA. I, I spent uh, one period building this uh, a startup where we were build, building a messenger for mobile gaming clans. Um, and as much as I had worked in free to play, this is because we were targeting this use case directly at the the uh, um, most uh, mo most engaged users of of mobile games. It's where I really really got to know them. And these folks um, in those in these style of games, um, people build their their real life social communities out, out of yeah. games. Uh, they, they get they get incredibly deeply in, involved uh, in this method of play that is not just it's a consistency of play and it, and it really becomes part of your life. And they spend incredible amounts of, of money. That's why it's the biggest revenue driver. But even an individual might be spending, you know, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars in a game, and, and a lot of that that drives that that top line revenue. And what I saw is they they are completely disempowered. Although they, uh, it's it's like the only version of trickle down economics that I've ever seen work. Those those folks mm -hmm. actually pay for the development of the game. They pay the publisher. They pay for everybody who's playing completely for free to play. And um, if the developer starts doing something that, that they don't like, they really have their only recourse is to full stop abandon um, uh, every, you know, their, their account and everything that they've done. Um, and that's where, where I think blockchain really changes things and, and yeah. has to make that relationship has to be deeper between the developer uh, and the, and the players because they have an option. They actually, own the assets and they they can get out if they if they if they want to so to me it's the the resistance that that is uh coming from the platforms now where you know even eternal paradox is, is going to be it's it's a it's going to be on android as a, as a silo there's not really any viable option for uh ios s right now um this is a better customer value proposition it fits in it's great for developers. It's great for publishers. It's great for platforms. So to me, it's just sooner or later, uh, those platforms are going to come around and, and really unlock um, a lot of potential uh, for the types of games that we're building. I want to get into, um, and I think this is a good point you're making, especially around the growth of mobile, because I think you're right. It's, it's just, it's an evolution that's natural for, uh, especially for blockchain. And I want to get into the aspect of the monetary uh, connections, because as we know, one of the big things with free to play is that many people would look at that. You know, there is a little bit of pushback from traditional gamers in terms of blockchain gaming, what that might look like, because in some cases people get priced out. You know, those kind of scenarios do happen. But with that being the case, and you look at things like just in general currency that's most used for like gala items, whether it's ETH or gala, are you seeing any specific trends? just from the infrastructure around the game itself, what seems to be more popular? The Gala token, the ETH token, uh, in terms of usage? Uh, oh, it's, it's on, on our platform, it's, it's uh, uh, I don't know the percentage, but, but by far it, it's, it's Gala token for, Gala for our token. platform. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that obviously that just, you know, just shows the strength of the community itself. Will, will the ETH merge have any effect at all, do you feel like, on what could happen on both the token itself, Gala, in general, or the ecosystem of gamers within, uh, especially within the Gala ecosystem? What are your thoughts? Um, only as much as, uh, how, however it is received, and I mean, you know this, as, as ETH yeah. go and Bitcoin go, our, our altcoins all, all follow at some, some level. So uh, I, hope it goes I hope it goes quite well and is well received. Um, you know, uh, fair or not, it's, it does seem like that's, yeah. that's the way it, it, it often tracks at, at a macro level. Yeah, and I, this is something that, you know, when we look at all coins, we do our top 20 on our own power index, actually top 30 gaming and, and metaverse tokens that we watch. Gala, of course, is in our index. We track or right now. I think we are up to 12 or 13 within the index itself, but we rank the industry based on community, a little bit of sentiment data and price action that kind of 
covers all that. So it's always fun to uh, kind of keep on that. But to your point, Gala has been one of those that has been leading the pack in terms of sentiment. It's been in the top three or four uh, for quite some time running. So good, good environment in terms of a community, which is good. And I want to talk about that because community is really hard to build. You guys are doing it through film uh, now and then also obviously through music and then the gaming ecosystem itself. Do you feel like the strategy of kind of an encompassing enti- uh, entertainment layer has been the key to your success? Or do you feel like the, it's just that the market was waiting for a gala to come by? I think it's it's just we're, we're an aggressive company. Uh, you know, gamers watch films. They listen to, they listen to music. Um, yep. it's, it was a natural next step for us and something we were willing to take on. I've been, I, 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 I've been incredibly impressed with our team's progress, uh, on the, on the business development and relationship front in, in film and music, um, as I've been focused on, on, on the games. Um, but our community really, it, it started on the, on the game side. And, and I think it was, um, we got here, we got here quite early with, with this, with this vision. Um, and I think people bought into it. It's a vision to, to let you get to, you get to own the things you buy. You get to really yeah. participate and own the things you buy in, in, in games. And I think that really resonated, uh, uh, with, with the community we had early on and, and, and grew. And it's, it's also as, as, as we grew and had, you know, success, um, we did a lot of, uh, uh, pre-sales for games that we're, we're, we're bringing to market as, as we had that success, it's just kind of built and built and built. We started with, with Townstar and, uh, Mirandis as our internal development studios. We started that way because we're, you know, we're building a platform company, but, um, when you, when you start a platform from nothing with, with no users, no traction, uh, it's hard to convince great developers to work with you, but it, it's just been a path over, the, I'd say the last year and a half that, um, Essentially, all the all the revenue we make, we we've just turned around and used it to to fund bigger and 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 better games. And it's always been a focus on making great games. That's that's the heart heart of this. Is the the games have to be great for any of the NFT strategy and tokenomics stuff to work. They have to be fun to play. And and we've just built on that. Um, uh, and I, I've been uh, 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 amazed with the 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 level of developers. That we've been able to attract and the projects that we've been able to take on now that that will be uh, uh, launching in the future. I'm still I'm very surprised. You know we watch, we get a chance to watch this very closely, but I'm also surprised at how fast the industry itself is accelerating. And I was looking at you know just in general if you think about GameStop uh, right now version 0.69, obviously coming out on the GameStop wallet. This is now released. This is most likely going to get a lot of activity in terms of games coming onto the GameStop wallet. What are your thoughts about what this side of the industry is doing and how will Gala start to integrate into that? Or do you have something even more, uh, more intuitively uh, planned in the future? Um, so I, th- I think we'll, we're, 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 we're agnostic and, and open to uh, Web3 wallet integration within the, the, the Gala platform. Again, I think we're 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 really focused on building building platform from great content. Um, I love to see this. You know, I, I love to, to see uh, um, investment and interest in in the industry as a whole. Anything that brings positive attention to to blockchain gaming, which at its heart is is a very user first and developer first uh, proposition. Um, right. uh, I, I I love to see it. So I, I like the 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 attention that that it that it's gotten. Um, I don't necessarily think of it as as competitive as it at, at this stage because we we need, very new. we need more people learn learning about this with with an open mind and realizing this is this is a good value proposition for for everybody. It's a very holistic approach we take. Yeah, you look at uh, you think about what the strategy of Roblox has been. They're focusing on monetization around advertising. Uh, they're trying to obviously adjust to their their Q2 estimates. They were they were kind of focused on. But the, what this brings up to me is the whole topic about immersive advertising within blockchain gaming and what that might look like as a revenue source for potential games as we start to see this launch uh, and really become a thing within the industry. Do you think that 
integrated advertising. We've already seen product placement in AAA studios, all that kind of stuff. Is this something that's just going to be a big part of blockchain gaming in the coming future? Uh, I, I could, if there if there's a revenue source there, it, it could absolutely be, become a yeah. key component. Um, personally, uh, what what blockchain gaming uh, unlocks through through uh, through ownership, I think advertising kind of cuts against it. It's that whole, uh, you know, if you're not paying for the product, you are, are the product kind of mindset. Yeah. So where we're looking at it um, in terms of brand integrations are, are really only integrations where it totally makes sense and actually enhances the game because you're, mm. you're playing a genre where maybe clothing brands or music are, are part of, of that, uh, uh, that genre in, in, in the real world. So that's really the only place that that uh, that we're we're looking at that. I I I, um, I don't think we'll we, we won't be uh, aggressively uh, per, per pursuing that. I, you know I can I can see why 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 Roblox might might go after it, but uh, sure. Yeah, I, I think we we prefer to keep it very in, integrated so that it it completely it makes sense because it would be there in the real world, not that we're we're you know pitching you. And, and add Which I, yeah and i think this is a good strategy i think metaverse most likely will be the perfect place for those types of vehicles the games themselves and the ecosystems around film you know obviously music those i think are going to be much more tied to artists uh the game itself and then the end user which is to your point is really trying to create a better experience and look at the opportunities that are you know those magical uh, points of interest there for sure. Uh, let's talk quickly about technology because this is something that uh, we're tracking quite a bit here in our studio. And that is, you know, kind of the growth of what's happening within the space. You've got NVIDIA, who's now looking at AI simulation, all sorts of new creative tools. When you look at developing and working with developers, how far do you think this is going to be going in the short period of time? Do you think we'll be continuing to see the kind of games that we're seeing right now? Or do you think that we're maybe at a threshold of a whole new environment of creativity around game innovation? Um, where, the, where the rubber hits the road for, for me right now is we have a number of our developers that are, are working with, with Unreal 5. Um, and that's been incredible to see uh, yeah. what that technology unlocks. In some cases, we've, you know, we've taken games that uh, were on previous versions and, and uh, um, just upgraded them to, to Unreal 5 instead. And, and it's, um, yeah, it looks like, it looks like a, a new game and a new new world uh, of, of, of games. So I'm, we don't have anybody working with the, the NVIDIA thing uh, in, in, in particular uh, at the moment, but um, you know, with 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 new uh, new platforms out, with with uh, more more processing power, um, often what you see is that that technology jump will happen um, quickly, like the new stuff's available, uh, and then it takes a little while for developers to fully take advantage of it. Um, so I, I am excited to see where it's going. Just constantly uh, getting more in depth, more realistic. Um, overall overall but i think it, it it always takes it seems it always takes a few few years for like the best game to yeah for a new platform and i think you'll, you'll kind of see the same thing here um yeah but the games that we're building like i think i um we're not trying to build just the best blockchain games we really are going after building the the, the best games you know and it, it interesting um, it shows with the type of developers we work with. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's the heart of it. Like I, I felt like there was um, if we look at you know free to play as kind of an analog of a totally too new uh, economy monetization system. It took a yeah. it took a very long time to get from Farmville to like you know Call of Duty Mobile and, and yeah, Fortnite. Exactly. That was you know it took it took a, it took a decade to to do that. Um, the, we're looking at this very similarly to say okay. We lived through that. We see where this is going. Why don't we just cut out the the middle and go directly uh, to 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 the good stuff? So yeah. the the games that we're building, as as, as I was saying, as, as we've you know built up capital to be able to invest, we've seen the the types of investments we make in projects going from. You know, I think when 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 I started here, very very early on, it was 
you know, one million, three million dollar projects. We, we've uh, we've we've signed on for a seventy five million dollar investment in a triple A title wow. uh, with with a studio that yeah I can't I would I, I can't wait to announce uh, some of these um, because I think they're really gonna um, it's gonna get attention of of real real game makers you know and real real well, players that's who, the thing. Who, who know developers like it's, it's yeah we're making real games we're we're making that'll level up the market for sure will... and to your point. Yeah, that's going to level it up like crazy. And to your point, really trying to win over those AAA studio devs that are eventually going to make their way into blockchain, if not already. I mean, you guys have already kind of scored a ton of really great devs already with just... I was looking at Grit, just a good, as a good example. Grit, to me, still is one of yeah. the most amazing visual blockchain games. Well, it's one of the most amazing visual games, period. Much less, you know, the fact that it, it's really centered around where blockchain is going. Um, all right, so on to the next one. I just want to remind everybody, make sure and drop some questions in. Make sure and smash the like button. We always love to get your feedback on these kind of interviews. And I want to get into Metaverse, John, because Metaverse obviously has been exploding over the last year. October, Metaverse, we, we saw an absolutely uh, blitzkrieg of unbelievable growth. And then, of course, that's when Gala kind of came to the forefront last year and became a separator uh, in terms of a leader in the pack from a token standard, but also from a standard of people recognizing what was happening within blockchain gaming. When you look at the metaverse as it is today, you look at things like Meta and other companies that are really trying to build on that. You've got metaverse open standards now looking to develop with the standards forum. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel like we do need kind of a uh, an accumulative approach toward the metaverse, or do you think there's going to just be a bunch of different, you know, metaverses and development initiatives out there? What are your thoughts? Uh, so I, I think there could, in theory, if, if everybody acts the same, there there could be one metaverse where you can use NFTs from all of these various projects if if the individual places that you use them um, allow that. And from our perspective. We're building a world around Voxverse, but we're we're very open to to having it be a place where you can bring anything. That's that's part of the, this whole thing is that you own the NFT, you you own it, and you should be able to go use it anywhere. A lot of I think because I'm from the, this gaming background, a lot of what I often think about about metaverse projects is um, okay. Now, what the hell are you doing there? Okay, I'm 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 in there. Uh, there's there's streets, there's buildings, there there's the Adidas shop, yeah. whatever what do you actually, what do you do? Right. So, um, the way I, why I see it is, is that a lot of, a lot of these, a lot of what you'd call metaverse are just interoperable games where there's a purpose to that. There's some, mm -hmm. there's something that you go there and do with a purpose that integrates people who, uh, create things to do, uh, people that, that actually play the games, do, do the things and, and have a, have a, uh, economy built around it that that mimics you know real world economics so it becomes its own kind of living breathing thing so even even at gala we are you know we're building voxverse as, as our, our kind of main main uh foray in, into metaverse um but we have a few other games that you could consider their own their own own metaverses like a lot of our worlds work like that Mirandus is going to be a a, a, a world like that like a um it's a it's a game where it's we want to make you feel like you live in medieval times with uh, yeah. you know with magic and and dragons and where it goes is completely controlled by the economy that the 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 players create and we have some others that are focused around other things like that like very bespoke experiences that have a real purpose for why why you're why you're in the world in 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 the first place yeah, um, for sure. I hope it doesn't. I, I honestly hope there's no. Uh, I hope there's no one big winner. I, I would hate to see Meta win because I think yeah. they want. Um, they want a walled garden and they want to take all the profit and keep like uh, they want control. And to me, it's the, This is not about uh, one, one party controlling over it. It's supposed to be about everybody owning their piece of it and having control of that themselves. So uh, my hope is that they specifically don't win and. <laughs> No, nobody else is just the, the clear winner in, in that. It's, it's it's an attitude I have for like all these, all projects that we could, you know, consider competitors 
Um, I, I just don't think of it that way. I, I think of us yeah. as partners building this new world uh, to, together. We're all we're actually all we're all baking the same pie. We all want a piece of it, yeah. obviously, but but we're all, we're all baking the same pie. Well, I think, you know, this is going to be a scenario that plays out. But to your point, Metaverse is so early and uh, most likely that we will see a lot of different iterations of how Metaverse gets implemented. The question is what what's going to be, be the overall economy within it? Is it going to be advertising based? Will we look at brand attraction or some sort of ability to, you know, deal with NFT integration and interoperability a, around a lot of games? All that's definitely yet to be determined. Uh, I do want to get to some questions and I'm not sure if we have a poll coming up as well. We may, uh, but I want to jump over to, well, let's there, there we go. We have a poll right now. So when will blockchain gaming explode and truly go mainstream? Here we are, 22. Everybody thinks that's pretty light. So it looks like 24 wins this one. Are you in line with that, John? Do you feel like 2024 is kind of the magic date, or do you think it's going to take longer? I think that's a I think that's a good estimate. I, I, I would think late 23 or early 24. And if even if I align it to our own, um, I kind of use a, a, our our own roadmap and, and project slate as a microcosm. Uh, this is just on the game on, on gaming. Um, mm -hmm. It takes a long time to build great games. There, there's oh yeah, there's there's absolutely no shortcut to to building great games. So like where where I'm where I'm talking about like the the uh, the, the larger investment we've made, larger investments we've made. These are these are mm -hmm. you know two year two year projects, and sometimes they take longer because you there's no point to launching a game but but before it's ready. So if if others are following in that same line, if others have had success and are, um, you know, doing doing the right thing by their users, which is taking that success and reinvesting it in in, in building better and better games, um, I'd expect a lot of these games to start to come to fruition around that that time period. And um, from our end, I can't speak to others, but from our end, I think I think they are really going to the level of quality that we're we're building. I think is really going to um, shock people. Uh, in the industry, and it's not just about uh, getting the the developers' attention. I think the real path to getting players' attention is not that they're thinking about, do I want to play blockchain games or not? They're like, I want to. What is that game? I want to play that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. That's that's how you get them. The, you know. So, I think you're going to see the, the quality keep value. going up and up and up. Yeah. Yeah, game value is going to be yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I want to take a couple of questions in, uh, one coming in here from Hill Dog. Uh, when do you see play to earn integration with something like Xbox and PlayStation uh, for X, uh, for Gala? Um, well, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I, I think it has with, 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 with I think you'll, we're going to see it before iOS and uh, and, and oh, Play Store. Okay. I, I, I'll, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. So what there I found go. is um, I think there there there's there there's interest uh, there, but there's there's absolutely uh, trepidation um, as well. So I think uh, as soon as you you see uh, the game start to go mainstream, those are going to be some of the first platforms. To, yeah. to to adopt this and, and and embrace it. What about a burning mechanism? If you think about just Gala the token, there's some companies or some projects that do look at different tokenomic approaches. Are you guys looking at uh, any kind of potential burning mechanism or future of how to control the token itself in terms of distribution? So, so as uh, um, I on. I, um, Gala token uh, uh, tokenomics and, and, and mecha mechanisms. Um, I don't think we are, but I'm probably I'm very focused on the games and game tokenomic economies. So I'm probably not the best per person to ask on the on the gala side. On the game side for game tokens that we launch, mm -hmm. absolutely burn mechanisms are completely and totally part of, of the, uh, the the economies that, that that we're building. It's it's absolutely right. You gotta um, either on the gala side. Um, because our, the economy around, around Gala is so large and we keep, as we keep reinvesting, not in just more games, but in music and in, and in film, right. there'd be the, 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 the amount of, uh, operability for the token itself 
should is expanding at the at the rate that the uh, mm -hmm. the, the token expands or, or greater in, in, in my mind as, as we do that. So I don't think it's as important for Gala as a token, but within a singular game economy, we're absolutely looking at that. Interesting. Uh, question here is people are talking about a kingdom building game. Uh, people are really obviously getting into that. This is coming in from Harry. Do you guys have any futures coming around kingdom building games? Kingdom building game. I don't know if they're if they're referring to a forex style game, which I think often kingdom building games are. Yeah. Um, we are we are heavily invested in forex. We got uh, two two space forexes announced right now. We got Battlestar Galactica, and we have um, uh, uh, um, Echoes of Empire. Uh, Eternal Paradox, in a lot of ways, is also a, a forex style game, and then we got um, Fortified, which is absolutely a kingdom building tower de defense uh, style game. Right. But I, I think what they're probably referring to is the four X style of, of play. We love four X. We think it's a great match for for blockchain. Um, and yeah, we have a we have a bunch announced and some others that aren't announced yet. So coming soon. All right, very cool. All right, and then uh, of course. Anything coming up uh, for Gala in the near future that you guys are kind of uh, leaning in on in terms of any kind of new game launch? Anything you can give us as far as a, a potential inbound? Sounds like you have something coming big, though, right now. So we've got, uh, we, we're a games company. We're going to launch some games. That's, that's what's coming up uh, this year. So uh, Spider Tanks will be the first to go. I think we're looking um, Q, Q4 for that, early, early Q4 launching it full on, uh, you know, the full full economy uh, along along with the launch of uh, the token for spider tanks called, called Silk. Uh, this is a game that's, you know, we've had this in beta. We've had um, we've had some uh, esports tournaments uh, uh, around it have you know, terrific interaction. And it, it's been a it, it's been nice the way we've done this, because this is a this game is, is quite balanced. It's not actually very. Uh, while you can upgrade your 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 tanks in the game for them to to get better and better, um, skill is really what what overrides the the ability to win in the game, which you need great balance for. So we've gotten yeah. you know uh, through through our beta test, we've got, gotten this game has been battle tested, uh, and it is it is really ready to go. So we're excited about that. Um, and then um, following that, the next one is likely going to be our game Superior, which is a, a uh, a rogue light, which is a, um, a genre that is, uh, I feel like it's it, it's it, it's a hot genre. It's it's a an exciting style of gameplay. Um, I absolutely love uh, love the team that that's that's building this game. Um, love playing it. The the art style is incredible. You feel you feel like you're playing uh, a, a comic book. Um, and I think this is really uh, this one is 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 headed. This is a this is a triple A production quality game this is one that i think um like many of our our games is, as we go down the line um it's not just a great blockchain game this is a great game this this team could have launched this had plans to launch it uh you know on on steam um and mm -hmm. just happened to decide to to do it with us uh in, instead with an nft strategy but this is this is aiming just to be a great game not a great blockchain game and i think this yeah, game this could is... launch and be a success with or without blockchain, I think it's going to be a yep. bigger success with it. Yeah, I think this is also, you know, just to your point, is certain games will most likely start to develop big communities. This could be one of those. Much like what you're kind of saying, is like playing a comic book. When you have those visual aids that really kind of create just a very unique uh, connection to community, this will be one to watch for sure. Uh, so it's I just fun. It's just a, it's really fun. Yeah, it's a fun game. I think if you play yeah. it, you're going to get get hooked, and that's what that's what we want. That's the key. Hey, John, it's been great having you on the show today. Thank you so much for stopping in. We'll appreciate it, and we'll definitely be checking back in as things continue to progress here with Gala, uh, for sure. Look forward to it. Thanks so much for having me today, Paul. Excellent. All right. So you guys are tuned in over on the podcast side of things right now. Make sure and jump in over here on our YouTube channel. This is where it all happens. We get the alpha. We do a ton of breakdowns, and also we do a lot and which we owe you guys one, is one of our metaverse and gaming breakdowns. We'll most likely do a, maybe a top 30 video coming soon uh, to give you guys just kind of a look-see on where the market is currently at. Uh, make sure, of course, and just follow us here. If you haven't subscribed to the show, obviously that's the first thing to do. Hit the bell. That's going to give you notifications of when we go live. 
And if you guys want to reach me, it's out on Twitter. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider.